Hey, coaches, welcome back to Football Talk with Coach Chip. Today we're going to be looking at a simple to install package using only one formation. Before we get started, don't forget our friends over at Wright Equipment. Find them online at Wright equipment.com. They can work with your budgetary limitations. They can help you get set up with your, your strength and conditioning program. They know what they're talking about. Go online, type in right, that's W R I G H T dash equipment.com. All right, let's get started. All right, coaches, you can see the formation here. This is what some people call maybe a stack right. A, a lot of uh, programs, when they put their running back on the same side as the H, they'll call it stack. You may have something else you call it. Some may use right to tell their H where he's lining up, and then stack tells the tailback you're on the same side as the H. Some do it real simple. They'll say, hey, right tells the H where to go. Stack tells the T, running back, get on the same side. And right tells the Z to go left until, unless you call right same. So if you wanted to go move the Z over here, you would just say right same stack. It just depends on how you want to do it. I know guys that use numbering systems too. But anyway, this is the formation. It's basically like putting the H, attaching the H, but not on the line and um, and not moving anything. No motion, nothing. Now I've got like nine plays. And I'm probably going to break this up into several videos. So uh, bear with me. Let's see how it goes. And uh, Hey, my YouTube channel, Play By My Rules. All right, the power toss. And by the way, you can go back and look at our several videos. Go back and uh, type in Coach Chip, A-gap power, okay, or how I block A-gap power. There's another one with more traditional, old school, B-gap, C-gap power. And I will tag those in the description and in the uh, comments at the end of the video, okay? Now, this is just the power toss, uh, option read, whatever you want to call it, read or option. I uh, These are in no particular order of my favorite play. It's just I got down and started just riffing with this formation. It's one of my favorite formations. Obviously, you go back and look at all my Jet videos from Season 1 and Season 2. Go back and look at those if you're a Jet dude because this is a great Jet formation. But I got to thinking, you know, folks want to line up and play the Jet maybe run some different things out of this formation. And all the guys that follow me and uh, check out my videos, a lot of them run wing T from gun or wing T, you know, theme stuff, wing T principles from gun. And, and you can do a lot of gap scheme with this particular formation. And you can see we're just blocking a gap power up front, um, not blocking the DN. This is great when you play that team that's got the stud DN, they're gonna put him to the strength. One thing for sure, this formation about guarantees you're going to get the defensive strength. If they flip players, okay, to the strength, you're going to get the best players to this because you're overloading that side of the field. The only way to make it more overloaded is put the Z on the same side. I like this because you do have the, uh, the pre-snap access, the gift. If they try to get nosy and play this guy in here and they say, why does that matter? Well, on this play, it doesn't because you're running the power to the right away from this guy. But if you allow him to hang out in here, he can take away your counter that you'll see later or anything back to this side. He can fall in right here and make the play. So we don't want that to happen. We're going to make this guy respect this. And it's up to you, your quarterback, how you want to do it. But if that cat's playing inside, and in essence, you got two on one with the bubble, or if you'd rather run a little quick, now screen to the X and let the Z go get the corner, either one is fine. But make that guy play out here okay now you're going to read the dn but you're going to make it a soft read or an easy read for the quarterback by bluffing with the h you wing t guys kind of like when you block down you fake a down block on the defensive end and go around him and get the backer on the down play the same principle threaten him make that dn that five tech think that you're running outside because it looks like you've got to run triple option right or I mean, not a triple option, but option. And make him think you're blocking down on him. So maybe that'll soften up and widen it out. And if we get good combo double here, 
and the wrap comes and gets here, you got a football play if your quarterback can run it. And if he comes right here and makes him pitch it or squeezes and takes away the power, just a little soft toss right here, and the H has come here, and now he kicks out on the backer. Okay, just and you run it right in here. Now, if the dude comes flying in here, okay, then you tell your H to hook him, reach him, and then you can bounce that joker outside. So that is a great play that a lot of teams have run recently, and it's not you're not frigging around with your offensive line, which is one of my tenets of coaching. You can do anything you want to in the backfield. Those boys are going to figure it out because they got a chance to run the football and score. The O-line, don't mess with them. Put in your base blocking schemes and figure out what you can do behind it. All right, let's go to the next one. Using this stack formation, loading it over to the right, and guaranteeing you're going to get an overload over there, you can come back and run the bash. QB counter bash, okay? You're going to block GT counter, okay? H is going to help that guard's kick out block by doing that bluff again. Pretend he's blocking down on him. Make that in a little softer and then turn out on the outside backer. Quarterback is reading the defensive end right here, okay? If the defensive end chases the, the pulling tackle on the GT counter, quarterback gives it. And you got sweep, you're blocking two on two. Now, here's the thing you got to do. You got to tell your running back on these on the bash not to cut it up in here. Because if this kid here, he may see that step here and then come back. We're not blocking him. Okay. If we block him, it'll be over here on the GT. So tell your running back this is a flat out, good old high, junior high, middle school, youth league sweep. Outrun them. And then you get your X and your Z out here stalking in space. Outrun him. Do not cut it back. Okay? And tell him, say, well, they got me over to play. If he can get four yards, it's good. Remember, it's a running down play. It's a running down play. So four yards is good. Don't cut it back in here. Don't cut it back in here. Because he may come here, we give it, and he redirects and comes. Okay? Don't shorten the distance he has to pursue the football. This guy, this guy, this guy. We're not blocking them for the sweep so that's a really good play out of this formation and by the way if you like going fast running plays out of the same formation over and over again yeah this is a great way to do it and you got a handful of plays with one name you know with one word names and you can go with that right so this is a great play out of this formation if you've got a running quarterback by the way if that dn runs up the field Quarterback going to ride to side. My, my basic rule is shuffle, shuffle. You got two shuffle steps to read. Okay, even on the RPO game and on the, the run read game. And then boom, and that gives the GT time to develop. And he's going to run GT counter right here. Okay, so the bash and the uh, QB toss, power toss, two plays for teams with running quarterbacks. All right, next. Here's a good play out of the uh, the overloaded formation to your right to come back and attack them to the weak side. And it's really, you got numbers if you think about it. The only extra player you have over here to the right is the tailback. Because look, you got one, two, three, four. But over here, you got one, two, three, four, with the only extra guy being the running back. Okay. And he only going to help you if you're using the quarterback in the run game. So you're going to get you against this even front team. You're going to get what you want. You're going to get the three, okay? Or you're going to get what they consider their strength over there. So, again, go back. They got a good football player, and you want to run away from him. You do this and make him the, the good DN, the better DN, play to the strength and run away from him. Now, notice on this one, this is the, the quarterback power read, the upside-down option, whatever you want to call it. Same thing for the running back. It's the same mesh as you use on the uh, on the bash. That's why I like doing both these plays because all you're changing is the point of attack. The mesh is identical, okay? The mesh is identical for the this power read and the bash that we looked at just a few minutes ago, okay? Just a few seconds ago, really. So tell your running back, if he gets it, just keep it outside because we're not blocking this guy right here. 
okay? He may squeeze and we give it, and then he redirects and comes right here and make the play if you cut it back in here somewhere, okay? So leave, tell him to get his butt outside. And the quarterback's just reading the DN, okay? You can see we're blocking power. You got a down, a down, and you got a wrap to the backer, okay? And we're reading right here. Really important to stress to your guards. They got to hug those down blocks, what I call the rump line. Be close enough to strike a match. You know, those old white tip matches, you older guys know what I'm talking about. On the on the booties of the down blockers. Don't go out and get the DN. Tell him we're reading the DN. We run the power. We got an H or a, an F to block him, to kick him out. Don't go out and block the read. You got to rep that. You got your O-line knowing that the only time they're going to get him if he just totally just comes flying down in here and your path just takes you right to him, okay? And if that happens, we should have already given the ball, right, okay, to the running back. And you're just blocking power. Again, go back and look at our A-gap power video and see how we block power. Now, what I'm doing, you've known before, I like to run the fade, not throw it a ton. It's a 50-50 ball, but to stress this guy right here, all right, so just have him doing it. And every now and then, you'll catch him asleep, okay, because we've been running it, running it, running it, running it, and the quarterback can just, on his own, just disconnect and pop the fade. You won't have men downfield. You're throwing it too fast. Remember, it ain't where the linemen are when the ball lands. It's where the linemen when the quarterback releases the ball. And so if he sees that and he likes his numbers or you like it, okay, you catch a kid over there that's sleeping or it's not a really good player, or he's been sloughing off because we've been running away from him. Tell you, just give your quarterback a signal. Maybe it's second and two, second and one. You want to burn one. It's high percentage not to get sacked because you're just going to take it. You can have him flash fake, rise up and throw it, or just take the snap, raise up and throw it. So that's why I like doing that over here. Okay. If, if you don't throw it, but once or twice, you still stress him. And here's the thing you may not throw it a lick in a game, but you threw it three or four times in a previous game, their DB coach, their DC telling this guy, hey, man, they're going to throw that fade. So every time you run it, you're taking a little bit of gas out of his tank. Okay. All right. Now, also notice what I'm doing here. He's just doing this. This is for your guy in the box to look at. Tell him, check that backer. Check that backside backer. Is he triggering on that guard pulling and getting this run through that defensive coaches like so much? Okay, that'll kill you on power. That run through will kill you. Okay, so what do we do? Check it out, and you can come back. Now, you can't run it on this play because the quarterback's eyes are on the DN. There is no RPO. This is just for the OC or whoever's in the box. Hey, coach, the backer's triggering. He's getting a run through right there. Then you come back and run power or something similar to power where you're blocking the DN and you got that backside RPO right there that's coming up. Okay, let's look at it. Now this play is the cousin, the half brother, okay, of the quarterback power read. This is it right here. Now you're running it exact same, except you now you're telling your line, you're tagging whatever it is you're gonna do, it's a kick, QB kick. So instead of wrapping, and you can do it because you've got the strength away from the play side, right? So you block it just like power, but you're telling the guard, kick the D in because we're going to read the backer. Now the quarterback's eyes are not on the D in because we're blocking him, okay? Everything else looks just like the power read. You got him blocking out here, you're stalking, you're running your fade over here, and you're running that same little glance, whatever you want to call it, right here with the H, but now the quarterback's eyes, when he takes it and seats it, he's reading the backside backer. If the backside backer triggers when the guard pulls because you've been running the power, the power read, and you've noticed he's getting nosy, he's making some plays, the last time we ran it, hey, run the same play, but a different read. Now instead of a run read, it's an RPO. It's a run pass read. Same. Everything's the same except the guard is kicking the DN, and we're not reading the DN. We're reading the backside backer. If he triggers, disconnect, boom, throw it. If he doesn't trigger, if he's playing flat or hanging out, 
ride, no ride and decide. The ride and decide is to throw it or not. Keep it quarterback power right there. Okay. It's 15 minutes in. I'm going to keep going, and then later I'll break it up into some smaller videos. And heck, it's YouTube. You know, you get bored or you run out of time, you just stop it, and it'll pick up right where you left it last time. All right, let's go to the next one. You didn't think I heard you, but I heard you when you said, what do you got if you don't run, run don't want to run the quarterback? What if you got a pretty good passing quarterback or you don't have much depth at quarterback? Your number two is a ninth grader or a tenth grader. It's not ready to play. Or your number two QB is one of your wide receivers and you don't want to get your quarterback dinged up. You want to protect him. Run this. It's the same thing. It's not QB kick. OK. Use my trusty just play and make it tailback kick with the RPO. And it's the same RPO. You're still reading the backside guy. Now the quarterback's eyes, as soon as he catches the snap, he's going to go to this backside backer. You're pulling right here, just like on power, but instead of wrapping, you're kicking the DN, so it was more like a long trap. Okay, I like calling long traps kicks to d d differentiate, easy for me to say, from a true trap, which to me is a short. Okay, you're trapping a two or a three, or maybe even a four high. But when you're trapping a five or wider, I like calling that a kick. And the quarterback's going to seat it in the tailback's belly. Okay, shuffle, shuffle, key that backside backer. If he triggers, throw it. If he hangs out, plays flat. Okay, now to me on an RPO, if they play flat, you give it. Okay, because even if they make the tackle, you're four or five yards down the field. If your running back's any good at all, he may break it or just fall forward. And now you're looking at five or six instead of four or five. Okay, and who knows, he may get caught up in the trash if he plays flat because you got a down and down and you never can tell. He's got to wade through that mess. All right, so boom, and this is a A gap, B gap play. It's just like power. He's coming flat just like he's running the the bash or the uh, or the power read right here. But when he gets it, he's sticking that left cleat in the ground and banging right there. And you're getting your kick right here, okay? And if this guy comes, disconnect, you're throwing the same cockeyed RPO. And this is for teams that got the quarterback that can throw it a little bit and they don't want to run him or he's not a good runner, he's not the best runner, you can do this right here. Okay, and notice I'm still running the fade on the backside, trying to stress that corner. You never can tell what's going to happen. And if you like it, your guy in the box, your OC sees it, you just give him a signal. Say, hey, throw it. That's, again, it's second and short. You want to take a shot. You got a pretty good Y or a pretty good X if you're running it the other way. Throw that joker. Okay? So this is a tailback kick with the backside RPO, and you're definitely putting this cat here in conflict, okay? And again, we're using the same formation. You know, it's a stack that running back and the H are on the same side, and the H is lined up outside, so he's still a passing threat. And I'm gonna do a separate video with just some passing on it, okay? All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, now this is the same play, and I didn't show it to you. Let's go back and revisit this. You've also got your gift, your pre-snap, your access, whatever you want to call it. You got a corner that's playing sloughing off over here. Okay. You can run a hitch or you can run pre-snap bubble right here or let him go get the corner if the tailback's being nosy, not tailback, if the linebacker's being nosy, playing in here and falling in and making plays on your kick play, your power, whatever you want to call it. You can run the quick screen, just the now pass, bam, go block here, you're two on one. Okay, and I wanted to share that with you because that keeps the box a little kinder, if you will, because this guy's unaccounted for in the blocking scheme. So the quarterback has to handle him. And you got to stress that to your quarterbacks. The reason they got to they got to be willing to throw the pre-snap gift, the access, whatever, based on leverage. And there's a video on leverage too, and I'll tag it at the uh down in the description too okay but i just want y'all to be aware you've got these pre-snaps out there to keep these guys from getting in the box but you got to be willing to throw it 
you know, if you don't trust your quarterback to throw it, you can see it. Have a signal, have a word, whatever it is. Don't let them. If you're not in a hurry to go fast and you don't want to go fast, you want to take your time, be more deliberate, line up, see what they're doing. That joker's all the way inside where he can help out off tackle. You've got to throw the football. Okay, now on this one, I got him running the hitch and I got him coming in here to block so he can block when you throw the RPO because it's the same play. It's the RPO. I'm just showing you the gift, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up right here. We're a little over 20 minutes in, and that's long enough. Um, I'm going to come back and make another one using the same formation, showing you some passing concepts that you can do, use out of this formation. This is perfect for teams with limited practice time, with limited resources personnel-wise, and you can do a lot of things out of one formation. Okay, and all you got to do is change your tailback, move him over to the left. You got a good buck or outside zone formation. There's all kind of things you can do just by doing a little tweak and you're basically in the same formation every time. And I know defenses can get a bead on you when you do that, but hey, it is what it is. Time is what it is. Time is a precious commodity. You don't have much of it, especially when you got kids going both ways. So let's think about that. All right, don't forget our friends at rightequipment.com. Rightequipment.com. You got budgetary limitations to go along with your time limitations and your personnel limitations. Call rightequipment.com. Find them on the on the interwebs. Okay, they got something for you that you can use. They supply all over the fruited plain of the United States. They're everywhere. They're out west, the Midwest, deep south, up north. They're on college campuses. They're all over the place. Some of the best high school programs in the nation train with right equipment. Train the right way. Okay. Don't forget, subscribe and like. Hit the little bell. Guess what? We made the thousand mark. The magic 1K subscribers. I know there's people out there with thousands of subscribers. Listen, just out here trying to be elite, man. Being the best version of me I can be. Until next time, you do the same. And remember, be elite.